Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the SARM S23. S23 is a very, very popular SARM. A lot of blogs and YouTubers have promoted it as the most powerful SARM that is available. So I'm going to be going over today and talking about what it is, how it works, kind of the history about it, my experiences with it, the dosing protocols, and a few other assignments to go along with it. I'm also going to talk about the PCT process involved with the SARM S23. Before I get into all of this, though, Please remember, I am not a doctor. I am not supposed to be talking about this stuff or giving any kind of medical advice, which I'm not doing in this video. I'm simply relaying the research that I have gone over, my own experiences, and giving that information to you guys for entertainment purposes only, okay? This is not me instructing you guys on how to use this product. This is simply my interpretation of all the information out there and my experiences, and I'm forwarding that on to you guys. Those of you who are actually researchers can you hopefully utilize some of this information going forward, okay? so. S23 is a SARM. It's a selective antigen receptor modulator. If you've watched my channel long enough, you already know that. But for those of you who are new to the channel, a SARM or a selective antigen receptor modulator differs from anabolic steroids because it goes directly to the antigen receptor within the muscle. So an anabolic steroid works by increasing hormone levels and thereby a byproduct of that is stimulating the antigen receptors. A SARM goes directly to the antigen receptor to stimulate the muscle growth in this kind of situation. Okay, so that is what a SARM is, and S23 is probably the most, well, I'm sure it is the most potent when it comes to the occupation of androgen receptors. Um, as far as I know, there's nothing else nothing else out there that comes even close to S23's ability to occupy androgen receptors, and that does cause some issues down the road, which I'll go into, when it comes to using it in conjunction with TRT or other hormonal type steroids, okay? So... SARM, the SARM S23 in research became apparent as a possible use or a possible medication for a male contraceptive because it interrupts the HTPA, um, thereby causing infertility almost 100%. So to get true infertility, a guy using S23 would also need to use some estrogen. Part of that is because um, S23 does not convert at all to estrogen, okay? But it also suppresses testosterone levels. And estrogen in the male body is dependent on testosterone. So if you don't have enough testosterone available in your body to convert into estrogen, not only do you have low testosterone level, but you have a very, very low estrogen level too. And that causes a lot of side effects when it comes to not being able to build muscle, erectile dysfunction, uh, infertility, depression, dry skin, so on and so forth. Okay, so having too little estrogen in your body is a huge problem just as much as not having enough testosterone is, okay? Now, when it comes to S23 occupying all of these androgen receptors, if you're on testosterone as a test base, which is what I do for myself and what I suggest most people would do, since SARMs shut you down so badly, you're gonna need some testosterone in your body since your body's not gonna be producing much, if any, during the SARM cycle, especially toward the end, right? So for myself, I'm always running a TRT base year round. Whether or not I'm cycling anything, it's irrelevant. I'm running tests year round. As a TRT, I have a prescription for that, and that's what I do year round. Now, since S23 occupies so many androgen receptors, I'm actually able to lower my dose of TRT while I'm utilizing S23 because that testosterone, those estrogen, uh, those androgen receptors are being so heavily occupied, I have more free testosterone in my body, okay? It's not as readily um, utilized by the body, right? Because the S23 is occupying so many androgen receptors. Now I have extra testosterone in the body because before it was being utilized, but now, now the androgen receptors are occupied that S23, by that S23, the testosterone is more freely available. It's called free testosterone. So it can convert easier into DHT and estrogen primarily. Okay. That's where a lot of the side effects come from. That's why a lot of guys get acne when they're running S23 is because they have too much testosterone in their system and they're getting high, uh, high levels of DHT. So they're getting hair loss and they're getting acne problems from it, okay? Um, another issue that can come from that, it would be gyne, ultimately, um, and there's a lot of debate on that. I've talked a lot before about how SARMs don't cause gyne capacity because they can't convert, but something like S23 could actually be more likely to create gyne capacity because it alleviates so much free testosterone. And now your body has to do something with it, so if somebody's body is converting too much of that to estrogen, then a byproduct of that could be gynec master. So once again, if you're utilizing S23, it would be a good idea, of course, going through your doctor and verifying all this with lab work 
But the S23 would probably benefit you most if you were to lower your testosterone levels as well during the cycle, okay? Now, when it comes to a post-cycle therapy or something to run on cycle with S23 to make the PCT easier, a PCT is definitely going to be necessary, right? Um, the L, your LH, luteinizing hormone, is caused by the HTPA, stimulates LH, and goes to the testicles to produce testosterone, right? So when that gets interrupted, when an axis gets interrupted by the S23 or any other suppressive SARM, you're going to need to do something to increase that HTPA and get your body, or sorry, the LH. You're going to have to do something to increase LH to get your body producing testosterone again. That's where something like enclomiphene might come in, but more likely HCG would be a good bet. That's what I've utilized in the past with success. Um, I've talked about this before with ACE262, where I utilized HCG while I was on the cycle to help not have the lethargy, um, et cetera, that goes along with the ACE262 or with S23. Um, and a lot of that is because the LH has been decreased so much, the body's not producing enough testosterone. Uh, and there are probably some other factors that go into there, which we don't really understand it. Okay, so, all right, so usually S23 is divided into four doses per day. So one dose every six hours, okay? Uh, that's because of the half-life around it. Generally speaking, um, if you're going to be utilizing something, you want to keep an even level of it in your system. And this is something I've debated a lot in my YouTube videos. When it comes to a SARM, I don't think it's as important as with an anabolic steroid to maintain blood levels. Uh, with the steroid, it's obviously important because you don't want your hormones fluctuating so drastically um, and so frequently as would happen with a short half-life and an anabolic steroid, right? So if you're taking like D-ball, right, and you're taking 50 milligrams first thing in the morning and then you don't take it again until the next morning, uh, there's going to be a huge fluctuation in hormone levels around that, that single dosage, right? And then you're going to have a spike in hormones and then a drop-off. Um, and so that can cause a lot of side effects, especially with mood in the short term. With the SARM, I don't think that's so important because, again, you're directly stimulating androgen receptors with it. It's not causing the hormonal fluctuation with the big increase and then decrease. Overall, it's going to be causing a decrease, right? But that decrease, I think, is added up over time, more so than it would be off of singular big dose every 24 hours, okay? So something like HCG can definitely help to keep the LH in production during the cycle and then get it going again, get your testosterone levels going again after the cycle in the PCT. When it comes to dosing, usually liquid is the best choice because you have the most control over the amount per dose. Um, when it comes to something like a injectable, this one's from American, obviously uh, sticking yourself four times a day is going to be a pain. So something like this, I would just do a singular injection before working out, probably an hour, maybe two hours before working out. I would do a singular injection of the S23, and that would be it for that day for the S23 dosage. Um, something like capsules can be great because liquids usually taste like horrible, right? Chemically taste. Uh, so a capsule can be a great choice. However, again, you have less control over the dosage. And most guys are dosing this somewhere between 10 and 30 milligrams per day as optimal. Reason being, if you go above that, you're going to tend to have more side effects. A lot of those side effects actually come because you're, you can't eat enough calories to keep up with the amount of muscle you're going to be growing off of S23, okay? Now, it's increasing your metabolism too. Not only is it increasing your metabolism drastically, but it's also increasing the amount of muscle your body is utilizing and the number of calories it can utilize for building that muscle. So eating enough is going to be a significant problem with a higher dosage of S23. That's why something like 10 milligrams per day is probably best for most people because yes, they're going to need to increase caloric intake during that cycle, but it's still within a reasonable scope of caloric increase, right? So you're not going to eat drastically more. Hopefully you're already eating clean and you're getting enough protein. So you simply increase it by maybe 10 or 20% per day during that cycle to get the maximum muscle gains, right? Whereas if you go up to say like 30 or 40 or 50 milligrams, you're going to have to increase caloric and take maybe 50 or 75%, right? It's going to be a huge increase in caloric need. So my experience with S23 um, I didn't increase my caloric intake enough. And I think that was a large part of why I didn't get a lot of muscle gains off of it. It did make a huge difference in the first week, right? It was very noticeable. Now, I like to compare most of these SARMs to S23, so not destroying your liver. Now, compared to, to Superdrawl, S23 gave similar looking gains within the first week, right? But like I said, I had a hard time eating enough 
to keep up with it. It did seem to increase metabolism more than what Superdrawl would do. Although with Superdrawl, I do see a significant leaning out over the first couple of weeks of use um, in a similar manner. But I think S23 does it in a much more efficient manner. So a lower dosage would be probably a better choice. Um, after a couple of weeks of use, I think it was about a week and a half, maybe 10 days. I'd have to go back and look at my earlier videos on this when I did the cycle. But I think it was about 10 days into the cycle. I was no longer able to get off um, from intercourse or, or, or any other form. I, I simply could not orgasm right and it was very frustrating and that was the primary reason why i quit using it um, i did see some increased hair loss at the time i didn't think it was related to the s23 although there is a chance it could have been related and probably was related to the s23 increasing my dht level since i was on a pretty good dose of trt at the time um, it's very likely that it was increasing my dht levels and that was stimulating more of the hair loss at the same time like i said i couldn't get off at all which is probably because it suppressed my lh so much my body wasn't able to produce anything right so um, your prostate has to be able to produce all of that kind of fluid and so or a large part of the fluid anyway and so when your body's not able to get the stimulation through the lh to do that to produce that fluid um, then it's going to be virtually impossible to get off because there's nothing to come out so where would you buy the stuff so liquids chemio has always been like the go-to place right top quality they've been around for a very long time very reputable source they have liquid only when it comes to SARMs. They also have some powders, uh, but as far as ready-to-go stuff, they only have liquids available. If you wanted to mix up your own um, liquid or fill capsules, they have the powders for that, but liquids are where they predominantly um, rule the niche. Then there's injectable available on American and Unchained SARMs. I think Pure Ross also has injectable. Um, capsule form is available on a lot of websites like Unchained, American, Pure Ross, um, Swiss Kims, they all have capsule forms. Uh, and then American does have liquid as well, which I think all the companies I named have the liquid format of S23. Some of the companies come with a dropper like American. So that makes it easier to measure. You measure out, uh, I forget what it is. I think 30 drops equals one mil. So the dosage is always on the front of these labels, right? So there's 30 mils in this. And on the back side of this thing, it says there's 30 milligrams per mil. So you know how to measure it out when it comes to liquid. It's very easy. It's simple math. Um, if you guys are looking for any of these products, make sure you go check the link in the video description or up above and their discount codes for each of those companies. I do get a small kickback from them for you guys utilizing those links. Uh, but you guys get do, do get a significant savings on your purchase when you utilize the link. So it benefits both of us. And I really appreciate the support. It helps me continue with this channel. Make sure you guys subscribe, like this video, comment, and share. It helps out a ton with the algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.